we want to find the equation of the given function using the sine or cosine function. We'll build the function in one of these two forms here, where the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, two pi divided by b is the period, c affects the vertical shift, and d affects the horizontal shift. We need to begin by focusing on one piece of the function, which we'll use to build our equation. And again, we can use either a cosine or sine. Notice how we focused on this piece of the curve. We could build the equation using the cosine function, since we have a maximum function value at what looks like x equals negative one-half. But instead of guessing that this x value is negative one-half, let's focus on this piece of the curve, which we know resembles the basic sine function graphed here in red. But notice how the pattern is slightly different. The basic sine function starts at the midline, then has a maximum function value back to the midline, then a minimum, then back to the midline, where our transformed sine function here starts at the midline with a horizontal shift, and then we have a minimum function value. So we also have a reflection across the x-axis. So let's begin by determining the values of a, b, c, and d. We'll notice how here the midline is the x-axis, which means there is no vertical shift, and therefore c equals zero. Also notice the distance from the midline to the maximum function value or minimum function value is positive one, so we know the amplitude is positive one, but again, because we have a minimum function value here, rather than a maximum function value like we normally have for the basic sine function, a is not positive one, a is negative one. Now notice that we're starting at x equals positive one, which means we have a horizontal shift right one unit, which means d is positive one, but notice our equation here is in the form of x minus d, so we'll have x minus one because we have a horizontal shift of one unit. Now the last thing we need to find is the period so that we can find b, where two pi divided by b equals the period. Notice how we don't have enough of the function graphed here on the right to determine the period, so we'll use the piece on the left. Notice how if we start at x equals negative five here and end at x equals one, we have one complete cycle of our transformed sine function, and notice how this horizontal distance is positive six, which means two pi divided by b must equal positive six. So two pi divided by b equals six, multiplying both sides of the equation by b. We have two pi equals six b, dividing both sides by six. We have b equals two pi divided by six, or pi divided by three. So now that we know c, a, d, and b, we can now write our equation. We would have y equals, a is negative one, so we could write negative one times sine, or just negative sine, of b, which is pi over three, times the quantity x minus d, so we have times the quantity x minus one, and then c is zero, so this equation would give us the graph of our blue function. I hope you found this helpful.